Welcome to our third episode of Leading Ladies, a conversation with me, Lucinda Lilly, my associate, Melissa DeMarco, and rotating guests who are leading in their professions and their lives. Today, we open the door with this leading lady. Please welcome Carla Azevedo Tabor. Carla, thank you so much for joining us. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for having me. So Carla has been with her company for 10 years this April. She started as a new leasing agent and grew into the general manager for the organization where she is training and guiding new area supervisors or regional managers in addition to her own direct team. She can truly attest that formal education and a big budget are not always necessary for growth. You just need to have a growth mindset. Carla, we had you take the USC quiz and I'm curious, what leadership style are you? So funny enough, I took the quiz twiz twice. And in one time, in one instance, I got the postmodern. And in the other time, I got the contrarian. I guess it must depend on the day. <laughs> that is funny. But it does show that leadership styles can be fluid, I think, especially in our industry, but also just based on the day or what is happening in the world. So let's look at both styles. Postmodern leaders develop new methods for solving problems by dismantling status quo. They like to empower people to overcome. This is actually the style Lucinda and I both got too. Contrarian leaders know their limitations and delegate accordingly to manage them. They like to look at situations holistically and find the best approach. Do these two sound like you, Carla? Or are you perhaps a mix of both of them? And how has this style changed over your career? Yes, it, it does depend on the day. For the most part, I think I'm a little more contrarian than the postmodern. I... I take a look at myself and I, in knowing my limitations, it has really helped me to grow. Um, for example, when I first started, I was, when I first started my formal leadership um, position, I was really rigid. I knew how to manage myself. I was very specific. I was uh, a perfectionist. And when I transitioned in to being more in a leadership role, that did not work for me. Being rigid and um, knowing or thinking that others were going to be perfectionists or that others were going to excel in the areas that I excelled or maybe not excelled in the areas that I didn't excel, that did not serve me very well at all. Well, I uh, so side note, I almost got, um, I, I had my first sitting in the principal's office in that Carla and it was it was that, per and I remember my boss telling me, Carla, your, your, your people just aren't taking to you. And I had really short hair. And I said, is it my hair? Do you think that it's really like something <laughs> happening? <laughs> I love it. Uh, he's like, no, it's your tone. It's your tone. Oh. It's your body language. It's, it's just all of it. You have to kind of loosen up and just understand that people are people. So Carla, how has this style changed over your career? I'm glad you asked. I, I think that in my, my, my change over the last 10 years or since I've gotten in the role is I've learned to relax a little bit. I've learned to enjoy others, um, their highlights as well as the areas that they need to improve. And I build on that the same way I build on my own. I know that with my limitations, I can then, I'm, I can, I've opened up and I'm free to ask my team for help and to ask in which areas they excel in to help me grow as well as help them grow when they need help. They feel like there's that two-way communication. Wow, I love that. That's an incredible observation and a really great growth opportunity, not only for your team, but also for yourself. Congrats, Carla, I appreciate that. So now that we know that you have dual leadership styles, let's start with this question. What's one mistake you witness leaders making more frequently than others? The mindset that that's just them. The mindset that, uh, especially when you're given feedback, typically negative, like I received in the beginning, my rigid style, I was told that I have to change my demeanor or the way that others perceive me, whether it's my body language or am I speaking too fast? And I could have easily said, well, that's just me. Instead, I said, okay, and it 
I'll tell you, it did hurt. It stung a little, but when I got over the sting, I was able to say, okay, if that's keeping me from growing, if that's keeping me from really getting to my team and having them maneuver the way that I need them to maneuver, not only for them to be successful, but for the whole organization, the goals to be successful, then I have to look within myself to make that change. And um, I can tell you that that is a conversation I have with each of the people that I train to get into that leadership into leadership is to understand that you will have to have self-reflection and in that self-reflection it may not look as pretty on the other side but you have to be able to understand that you don't have to necessarily lose yourself but you have to adjust in order to have um, be able to lead the, the most amount of people well, not lead but just to be able to impact the most amount of people no, Carla, I'm, I'm studying a book right now called Leadership. And in that book, there's an entire chapter about the fact that it's not about you and it's not about me. It's about the organization, the vision and where we want to go. And that's to me is so empowering because it has a, the ability to take that sting out of, well, no, it's not about me anyway. So how are we going to get there? You know? there a specific behavior or trait that you see that derails leaders in their career and in becoming a better leader? Yeah, along those lines of not being flexible is ego. It really goes along with it. Thinking of their title and because they have their title, they can they they don't need ideas or perspective from anybody else. Uh, but to, just as a caveat on the other side of that, you don't want to get into analysis paralysis. Um, I find that sometimes you have too much analysis and you don't make a decision. So finding that happy medium, uh, yes, I, I do have this role, but I also need input from stakeholders. I need input from um, my team and maybe looking into historical data and then just making a decision and proceeding forward with that decision. Good observation. So what are a few resources you would recommend to someone looking to gain insight into becoming a better leader? Sure. So of course you have people around you. I mean, I have, I know you, Lucinda. Lucinda uh, was a person that sparked some of that initial interest for me to go from having a job to then being a professional. So whether you knew it or not, Lucinda, you walked in that day to that classroom and you inspired something so much more. Um, so sometimes you can not only find mentors that you can speak with daily, but mentors that you can just interact with, whether it's one or two times. So getting together with other people in your industry, such as associations or groups, um, books, Audible. I love Audible. Um, for $15 a month, I get to at least learn one new topic a month. And I think that's an amazing deal. The other avenue that I've really taken to and I think has helped and I've encouraged a lot of people to do is YouTube. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know, but for $15 a month, you can get YouTube premium without any type of commercials. I want to say I love CSI. I love crime drama. I could watch <laughs> it for eight hours straight. But I've decided if I want to grow, I have to sacrifice. And some of that sacrifice is those evenings where I come home and I'm exhausted or on the weekend, instead of spending um, a couple hours of binge watching TV, I'm spending some time, whether I'm reading a book, making some notes, reflecting on something I've learned, going to YouTube, um, channels like Impact Theory with Tom Ballou, uh, Value Tainment with David Patrick uh, Bossbetter. Uh, charisma on command. I mean, there's just so many people that are willing to offer you high level of information for absolutely for free. I mean, look at what you guys are starting here. I'm so honored that I'm part, I've been asked to be part of this, but um, I just want to pass on to others that there's avenues and resources. You don't have to go to a four-year college, and, but if you did, you're already ahead of the game, um, but it doesn't always have to be that way. Love your intentionality. Yeah, that's amazing. And I had no idea about those YouTube channels. I'm going to go look those up after this for sure. Uh, yeah. So we always like to end our leading ladies with a favorite quote on leadership. So Carla, please share yours. 
Yes, my quote is from Nicholas Sparks. Nothing worthwhile is ever easy. Thank you. Great quote. Carla, it has been such a pleasure interviewing you today. Thank you so much for joining us. And for all of you out there, please watch for us. We'll have another episode coming up soon. Have a really great day. Thanks, Carla. Bye.